We're back at it with the Cunning Meta Watch, bringing you the top performing war bosses from this last weekend. Let's get into what's wall, what's not, and summarize a few wall tactics being continued this week. With a bit of flavor at the end, talking about a fun, well-performing list from an RTT. With that being said, we're always going to start off with our 40K stats. Mind you, our stats are pretty much due from this month, so 801 to 89 at the time of this recording. Um, we understand some people would like to extend it throughout the whole thing, throughout like several months of the index hammer, what I call, but I like to keep it into concise, uh, like two weeks, week increments, as well as I will most likely only pick um, factions that we're up against that are over 40 games played and even that small amount of time period. So I want to see at least a good group, right? But we'll start with stats overall. Stats overall with the orcs, with our green skins. Is that our interest? Is that a... yeah. Oh, we, we weren't going to start with uh, the, the matchups we were starting off with. Stats. Okay. I'm gonna just yellow the yellow mob. Follow with me, guys. David's not gonna pull up on screen, but I'm just gonna cover the stats overall with orcs real quick. We had 419 games played with an average of 48 victory points, with our opponents with an average of 47 victory points. Our real win percentage was 52%. So we we've not moved up over that margin. I understand some people are looking at us and saying we're at the 48. That's if you include last month's performances as well. If you're talking about just performance. Just specifically August, right now, um, not including the WTC, right, David? We're at a 52% win rate right now. We're not including that since you're, that that everything's concluded. Um, so that's orcs as a whole. As to factions, I there's a bunch of factions you can see on here on screen, but I like to keep it over games pretty much over 40. So for custodians, we've actually dropped in performance to, an, I guess we're summed up to 18% win rate out of 53 games. That's not surprising anybody. They're pretty tough in the meta. Um, a little bit of advice that I was given from some so local people that have been playing against them, sorry, people in my Discord that have been playing against them, is if you do get matched up against five-man units, try to get the initiative on them before they get to the objective. Um, try to impact the damage on them and reduce their ability to do damage to you by meeting them before they can get to the destination they want to get to. So um, fast units seem to be more and more prevalent for kind of that reason. Uh, another matchup is Chaos Marines. So Chaos Marines have come up, as we've been talking about. Most likely they would. They have good melee rules, but they also have good shooting rules. Um, and as people were kind of copying each other, as you know, if you play competitive 40K or hear about it, um, people were obviously going to go look for something that was out of the box, um, not expected. And we were suspecting Chaos Marines were kind of going to get that light, and they did. Um, and they are a bit brutal and stuff. They have efficient shooting and uh, decent fighting. And uh, So they have, out of 54 games, we're at a 20, I'll run up to a 28% win rate. Um, another very popular is the Kron, the Metal Boys, with out of 79 games. Mind you guys, it's only in a nine game period. So we play them quite often, and even at the casual level, and people stop using the term their rules. We're, we're at a 68% win rate with them, though. So we do play against them a lot, but we do quite well because they're a pretty slow army. Um, their lists are kind of looking very similar. They like to go into their katans, which we don't have a problem. If you want to get really expensive and slow, that's okay. We'll just bog you down. So it works too pretty decent to the Necrons. Um, Space Marines, always Space Marines have to be considered, right? Everybody has a Space Marine player that they probably play against. Uh, right now, out of 55 games, we're at a 43% win rate, because I like to round up. Um, another army I like to bring into play was Tau, as they have 42 games, but we are actually at a 28%, well, 27 if you round down. 27% win rate against Tau in these last, you know, 9, 10 days. Um, that's a little surprising as people have talked about how they're not competitive, as they're suffering. Um, so I'd really like to get more details into that on possibly how Tau have kind of come over, try to make over that hump. I'm not really sure. But that's what the stats are telling us, at least in that pool. Now, I'll actually include T-Suns in this, even though generally they're not over the 40 mark, just because they've been very important overall at the tournaments level, right? They were at the top performer mm -hmm. tournament play. And as you can see, in just general over-the-top gameplay, Orcs do pretty well to T-Suns. Even throughout the weeks, you've been seeing that, as we always cover these every week, every Wednesday, um, T-Suns generally get beat up by Orcs for the most part. And then uh, just to end it up is with World Eaters. So World Eaters, they're trying to get more games in. They're starting to make a come up and in there. Um, 40 out of 42 games, we're at a 58% win rate. So I like that matchup. I think you can go back and forth every couple of weeks. You can see that sometimes we beat up on them. Sometimes we don't get a lot of matchups. But as a whole, world leaders are starting to come up. And I think actually putting brigands on their list is more um, beneficial for them than not. So, yes. And then with that, we'll immediately go into our top performing 
GT list. Um, David, I don't want to maul his name, so let's <laughs> see if you can take it from here. All right, this, this first list is Scott D. Winter Wilkie. He played at the Boardroom Brawl. And um, it's a GT, so there's five rounds here. Yep, and this guy had some fun matches because he played up into a bunch of interesting armies, but as to you showing his army first? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, interesting picks here. I know a lot of the speed bosses out there are like, what? Death Killer War Track? Oh! Yeah, exactly. We got a Death Killer War Track, guys. Finally made his appearance. Um, we hadn't seen him anywhere in, in weeks, in months. I haven't really seen him anywhere in performing, and not even on an RTT level. So shout out for him making it work. I think now that he officially has a character keyword, people are more confident to take him because they want to put the en enhancement on him. And they put practice with him and such. Yeah, make see, sense. test him out. See if he's worth it. Uh, Big Mac and Mega Armor are also getting a shout out. You don't always see them come getting on the list that often either, guys. If you've been paying attention to us throughout the weeks um, as a whole, people will talk about him when they're casually making lists, but then he ends up getting replaced by other units in the list or you know just going for MSU or going for squig units. Um, so I'm glad he's on the list. Then we got the Captain Bedrock. Yeah, he's been uh, turning out to be a staple in a lot of work every, lists. Almost every competitive work list is pretty much bringing Blash Gifts and Captain Bedrock now, guys. Um, this is what I really like to see. Three, I think you keep going down, David. Three knob on Smash Squigs here. Um, a lot of people will just bring one and then bring the enhancements. I really do like giving the plus one a hit and actually bringing a knob, another knob on Smash Quick. I've never brought three. But I have made lists where you have two of them, and that's because you're not paying for the additional entire additional unit, but you're still getting a nice big base that you can use to maneuver the battlefield, some OC. He's making the whole unit way more reliable because you know that those chomping mounts from your squig hog riders, they hit on fours. So if you get him in your unit, let him hit on threes, you make them overall just more effective like that. Um, so I find it as a beneficial way to upgrade small man units, and uh, I think that's what he did on this list. So we have only one truck here. So for you guys that don't like truck spam, there you go. And oop, David already peeked out the battle wagon because yes, he brought a battle wagon. So against what the meta says, against what people want to do, rating them seats here, wherever they put them because they think it's too expensive. Um, I guess he disagrees. And a few other people gets, will disagree with you because um, battle wagon made his uh, appearance finally. And I'm assuming the flash gets are in there, but we can keep rolling down. All right. Because we still haven't seen there was the Big Mac and Mega Armor, so I'm assuming there's a big unit of Mega Knobs in here. Right? He obviously brought his his three-man Gretchen unit. He brought his... um Oh, and here's the Mega Knob unit. It wasn't a big unit. It was a joke. Not a joke, but a trick. Is that he actually brought us more of a small unit, three-man unit, guys. He was... Uh, oh, or, this is a five-man. This is a five-man. Yeah, sorry about the point. Sorry. Yeah. Six. He, but he slipped it up with the three-man with the kill sauce and then the one with the power claws. So he was bringing like a diverse unit that he could actually do both things. I see some people kind of teching into one only, but considering that the mech doesn't give you plus one to hit, he was just kind of letting them hang out there, which I appreciate him and just kind of trying to be by diverse against everything. So you can at least ship things away so they don't one shot him when they breach him. Now we've seen the three man, the three knob sergeants or knobs on smash this quick being assigned to these three squig hog boy units. So an easy way to bolster, like if you've ever played with your three-man squig hog boy unit, guys, you understand with Overwatch and the movement phase, you're getting these squig hog three-man units chipped down to what I would call an ineffective level, right? Because if you start taking Overwatch from a flamer, you lose one. If you take Overwatch again later in the turn, right? Or you get punched back, you lose another one. I got one dude. I know he can be useful, but he's not damage dealing, right? If you have the knob on there, and when you drop one guy and the knob gives the other two plus one a hit, you still have quite good proficiency here. And the knob doesn't just get picked up because he has so many wounds. So it's a good way to then, you know, in my opinion, and his as well, to really get those three-man units to maintain some combat effectiveness if you just add the knob in there. Because still the points are pretty cheap to add a knob to the three-man squig hog boy units, right? So that's something to look out for, guys, if that becomes more prevalent. And then, of course, you got the staple two-mana Storm Boys units, followed by... But instead of a small Warbikers unit, you have a large Warbikers unit. And that's where the Death Killer War Trike was. He was assigned to this big unit, giving it auto advance six, having his huge base be beneficial. That way they can all maybe tag into combat, um, clog up lanes, move blocks, stuff like that. He was really taking advantage of that. Um, something we obviously see missing here that some people would be used to seeing is a war boss with knobs. Um, there's not on there. There's no scapula unit. There's just one truck. And that truck could either hold the uh, the flash kids 
um, or the Mega Knobs. So we, we can see that I'm not sure exactly how I placed it, but you can see the benefit in either or. And of course, he had Follow Me, Legs on a Death Kill War Trek. So let's look at his matchups very quickly. Now that we took a quick look over his list, he was a top performing list. That's why he took a little time. Look it over. But what was fun about him and his weekend is that he was constantly playing against other green skins. So he kept getting matched up into other orcs constantly. Um, when we mean constantly, we mean in this first red game, he immediately had to play orcs. So right here, we have a beast boss on foot with super cyborg body. Some people like that because they feel like the beast boss is a, a nice model. And once he does get into charge into combat, they want him to kind of be more difficult to remove as a six of feel no pain doesn't make him that much more reliable uh, defensively. You got boss Snick Ralph for with a unit of commandos you'll see on this list. He brought gas ghoul. This is his opponent, mind you. This is um, um, Scott's op opposition. Now, Miles Rog, Scrag, back followed by Gas. So this guy's bringing the nice, thick uh, orc characters. Another somewhat reliable entourage of units with uh, two Squig, uh, sorry, two Beast Snagger Boy boys. units. And one unit of regular boys. Mm -hmm. you got one truck on this list as well. And he's also bringing the Death Killer War Trike. There we go. And, this and they kill rig. kill rig. So he's trying, man. This guy, this guy was definitely trying, and I appreciate him because, um, you know, he brought the kill rig. He was trying to have fun. He, you know, he was still trying to be effective. I'm sure he had my great idea. I'm sure he did practice. I'm not making fun of him. Um, I'm just saying a lot of people will try to be dismissive of this list just because he had that on there. So I appreciate it. You got the commandos, custom booster blaster. Shout out, custom booster blaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually did it. Let's go. Um, Squid Kong and a three three man unit to Squid Kong boys, and then another big man unit of War Vikings. So maybe there's something in this meta, guys, that possibly these guys matched up before. Maybe they played each other. Um, for some reason, we went from zero Death Kill War Trikes to two guys in the same tournament matching up against each other, playing against each other with the same Death Kill War Trike um, with the War Vikings on there. So if you guys think about that a little bit, maybe you've been considering trying it. I know some people have been talking about it in Discord. Maybe give it a shot because maybe these guys are caught on to something that we haven't all caught on to yet. I know that a lot of people are like, cool, the base, the base. We understand what a base does and how big it is. Okay? But we're talking about how does that implement in game and how useful it is overall in multi-meta uh, matchups. But in this mirror matchup, Scott came out the winner okay, with a score of a straight 100 against him. Yeah. All right, so let's move up to his next matchup. Which happened to be? Da -da -da -da. Or more orbs. Let's get that green skin on green skin violence. All right, David. All right, this guy brought the Big Mac with shock attack gun. Gaz Ghoul. Another Gaz. Okay. Oh, yeah. Gaz uh, still getting love after. Still uh, getting love without the bat, without the truck uh, uh, trick. Uh, Mazrog. Mm -hmm. Okay. Double pain boy. Double pain boys. Double, Double war, war boss. boss. Okay, and why is that? Let's see. If he has freaks of balls. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm appreciating his flavor, right, guys? Just because someone doesn't win it all out doesn't mean you can't respect their list and enjoy it. So what else is going on here? He's got one truck. Just one truck oh. again. Oh, is that a Gork in that? Oh, oh a lad after me own hawk. Oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know he didn't win, but still, hey. Um Unit of Gretchen and then unit uh, of three man unit three. of Mega Knobs. Mm -hmm. Oh, agree. Mm -hmm. in interesting loadout. Yeah, people, this, these One guys may be something on their own meta. They decide they want to mix up uh, their loadouts. I mean, just took it because WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG, like that's what know. I kind of think of it. When you're going that smaller, it's kind of like whatever. Um, three grabs with mech guns, press the Mega Can. I like that. Small end unit of knobs. So he maybe he put the war bombs with the small man unit of knobs or in the big unit of high swimmer with the big unit of boys. But you know, it's due to flexibility yeah, in the game. Absolutely. And he did give one of them with big choppers and one with power balls. That's a different deal. So that was his uh, second game matchup, and he ended up Scott ended up winning 87 uh, points, putting 87 points against him. Yes. In his third matchup, you'll see we have White Scars. White Scars. This list we got the Captain Terminator armor, Chaplain on bike, Primaris Captain. He's got Two units intercessors. Okay, not the most optimal as you would think, right? But it's no, still out there. Three uh, attack bikes. Yeah, an attack bike squad. Okay, three. That's different. Oh, and this white scar for the question. speed. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's for his list. Three man unit bike squad. Okay. Another three man. 
Flight squad. Let's go. The guys are trying to bring all the speed and three man. A lot of units for Space Marines. Very different than what a lot of people have been bringing, though. Yeah. A lot of units. Minimum size, it looks okay. like. Blade Guard, three man squad. You got your Eradicator, a three man as well. An Invader ATV. Let's go. Three man Outrider squad. There's his tank. Okay, Closer I was like, where's his guns? I'm like, what's going on? And then he brought a Storm Talon oh, gunship. Yeah. Okay, it was a different form of DACA. Not my favorite. Not any of that. Uh, not obvious, but here it is. And then a one Terminator unit, uh, a five man. So yeah. Scott put up 100 points on this guy, too. Um, so we'll uh, move on. But like, remember, Scott came in here with a unique list to his own extent as well, guys. So and he's putting up 100 point games against these oppositions, right? So out of these first, Three games, he's had two 100 point games, and his second game was 87 points. Going into his fourth matchup, this is where he faces some heat now. Um, and right here, he's come into contact with one of the meta bullies, Gene Steelers. All right, and this list has the Abominant, uh, Acolyte Icon, Icon Ward, Biophagus, uh, Reductus Saboteur. Okay, there's a couple different units that I'm not used to, but still, you know. One ten man neophyte. Not the most. Okay. The oh, truck. a Goliath truck. Two Goliath trucks. That's okay, different. There's the Aberrants. A lot of Aberrants. Okay. This guy was going for the Aberrants. five man. One, We've seen two, these ones form a little less well against orcs, right? Whenever we've seen um, GSC units that meet orcs with a lot of small units, are to interrupt you. When we see GSC units meet orcs and unit counts, as well as having guns, GSC ends up beating Orc when it comes to that MSU kind of game. When they start to throw on these fat Aberrant units, they seem to do worse into Orc specifically. Um, I know some people might disagree with me, but like, was it really tough? I understand. But based off all the games we've seen, right, David, with the top performing yes. players, maybe we haven't figured it out as individuals yet, but from the top performing players that make it a GP level when they do meet other GSC players, it seems what it comes down to that they bring too many Aberrants. Sometimes if the GSC player brings a lot of them, Seems to actually favor the orc player at that point because then they're not getting their points effective back, and orcs actually have some decent profiles through sheer volume and the ability to fight on death to actually bother and annoy some of these um, average teams just a little bit and still play the mission. So, I think um, GSC trying to meet orcs with this list isn't ideal, and I'm not sure exactly how efficient these uh, Goliath Rock Riders are to be on with the trucks. Um, right. But as a whole, how Scott did here, can we guess? Another 100. 100. So that's what I'm saying is um, I would definitely like Scott, out, Scott, if you're out there, shout out to you. Um, hit us up. I'd like to hear exactly how your wins look. It's very cool. But you put up another 100, even against one of the meta bullies. I know it wasn't the most meta meta list, um, but it still had a lot of guns, a lot of transport uh, vehicles moving around. He gets beaten, get angles on orcs, and he handles his ball to get a 100. Still perform a 100, guys. You're still perform a 100 in this meta when you have your second random secondaries and such. This list was very well rounded. Now, his final matchup, he didn't win. I would say that right off the bat. But it's understandable for the most part, as it was a um, difficult army to face against. Right? Right. Thousand Sons. A very common foe that we've seen for its face. Yes. And it goes back and forth on this all the time, guys. Like if you look at the stream on YouTube videos, streams, people talk about them in the matchup as a whole. When you pull up the stats, this game, for the most, most part, it goes back and forth. Earlier in the stats, when we showed how they did. We, we were winning on the casual level, but when you show the top performing top tier tables, this, this swings back and forth quite heavily in slight favor of the T Sun player. Well, this list says Armin on disc, okay. Exalta Sorcerer, Infernal Master, Magnus the Red, uh, Demon Prince. Okay. And then you got two 10 man rubrics with War Flamers, mm -hmm. uh, five man with okay. Alters and uh, Soul Reaper Cannon. Cannon. Okay, I like a rhino, One rhino. A vortex beast, yeah. five man terminator unit. So instead of those 10 man, like you see, I think he's opted for more units. It seems like we're just sticking, you know, 200 extra points to get more units on the field. Yep. Two man chaos spawn oh, and a man cultist man. unit. I'd oh. like to know what that demon does. Um, what specifically? Is one. You said there was a demon something like that? Yeah, the demon. But yeah, here's a list that ended out. up in this this list David Bourbon. Uh, I bet this point, sorry. He won first place at the event, right? He did end up putting 100 points up against Scott, surprisingly. Um, but overall, still shot out to Scott. He still did great. Third place overall at this 
uh, boardroom brawl PT. So great job, Scott. We pull up his list one more time just so everybody can see him. Um, Give them another just quick look over just so everybody can kind of get their eyes reaffirmed with this. Because Scott pulled out of five games, he had three 100 point games and 87 point games. And then he, um, you know, I like to know the missionary thing, but he only got 25 points in his last game. Still got third place even with that, just because he was scoring so well. So, did he have, can you go up a little more? Sorry, I was just moving on a little bit. He got the bad rub. And then we can go back down. All right. I mean, I liked his list. It was, what do you, what do you think, David? How do you feel about his list? A little bit of mix of the Mac, a little bit of the speed and the MSU and uh, the shooting. I like that. He picked um, a good mix of everything, but he didn't go too heavily into it, right? He didn't go too many Beganots, too many bikers. Um, he didn't pick those knob with the war boss. He decided to not unit that he was going to use the flash kits. Um, what he really stuck to were his quick on boys, are kind of the cement part of his unit. While he's running around with storm boys. Um, and three three units of wretched. Um, his battle wagon, I like the how he pulled it. How he played it off because he gets so many games to battle wagon when so many people are talking it down. Um, I give him love because I'm really happy to see that. So shout out to the battle wagon. Can I get a <laughs> for the battle wagon? Um, but with that being said, we can leave this list up real quick and can we look at the chat topics that are good, possibly? Yeah. Or do you uh, want to look at that? I was just gonna say what I like about this list is he wanted the solid foundation, like you mentioned, with the squig hog boys and the flash kids, and then add a little bit of flavor with the big man. You don't see that that character taken too often. And he wasn't scared to try out the death killer war trike. Give him the enhancement and the five man the six man biker unit. Yeah. He was just getting wherever he wanted. I mean, once the wall was called, that guy was just going, just going. Yeah, follow me, lads on it. Um the auto advanced six from it. He was just Throwing it in someone's face, picking up a lot of the board, possibly move blocking, maybe stealing from OC, um, beating a small skirmish unit. So that's where I can see that being beneficial. And I did appreciate his battle wagon. Like I said, I'd like to see how he played it as he did him well. So great job. And uh, we Some can just chats. real quick. We got Wop a Wop, Walls in the chair. The chair. Rob Broom, Wall, let's go get crumping, lads. Yeah. Just stuck in, boys. Mark Bruce. Good wall Bruce morning. Been, Bruce has been performing well. Shout out to Bruce. We got Wall Day in here, too. Wall Day. Wall Day, I wish you a shout out. Joel Atkins in here, too. Joel, there you Wah, go, buddy. bosses. <laughs> uh, Robert Broom says, easier to get the hogs in combat as well, as only the smasher needs to get into to base to base, and the mm -hmm. other three hogs can all fit around his base to spread it out a bit. Yeah, that's true. If you're trying to fit him in a nice, uh, tight spot, shout out to Rob. Uh, that's where the knob also exists, right? So I really do like that too. Overall, just that might really take a look out for that because I said it, what I said, like two weeks ago. Are we going to see the battle wagon make a come up in? Yeah. And here yeah. we're going to see later today, there's another battle wagon list. Uh, but also, what we're seeing, like you said, is uh, we're going to see the knob on Smash the Squeak make a come up in. I'm starting to think so, yes, because I've been running him more often in my games, and I actually really do like the knob on Smash this week um, to assist with the three man units. Because three man units, once you start taking Overwatch and you lose a guy here and they're on boards, you're like, what are you really doing besides bothering people? Right? You leave the knob on there, they can still do stuff. Um, and I appreciate the knob base. So shout out to Rob. Yeah, Joel Atkins, green tide at the boardroom, bro. Wow, it's all around. That's what I'm saying, right? How is all this green skin and green in a matchup? These dudes really were brawling, man. Goodness, and you know these guys fought before because they had the same war boss and uh, that kill war trike and war bikes on their list. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, Shrimps less. Who was that? A uh, jujitsu club? Shrimp is. <laughs> <laughs> a little late, but whoa, gents! You never late for the wall. Big Mac Brandon late because the gym. Whoa! Yeah, you gotta stay swole. Yeah, yeah we know about that. Oh, yeah. Gotta oh. keep it up, boy. I'll cut it. A proper green skin stays strong. All right. So what's going on? Oh, and then we're gonna move on to the next list. I said what's going on. Let's go. <laughs> Let's enjoy myself. Like so. All right. Um. Next, we will go to. I can tell you yeah. uh, uh, Joseph Bamarito. Yeah. See, I would have butchered that name. Horrifically. And he played at best in the tabletop GT. Oh, it was a North Star Open. That's it. No, oh yeah. So. Yeah. That was his it, team. It was North, North Star, Star Open. Open. Yep. And that was his uh, teammate. 
and he plays fifth. So yep. a very good showing. Yeah, excellent showing again. Um, he didn't end up getting hundreds. It's okay though. You don't gotta get hundreds and play perfectly. We were just wanted to really accentuate how amazing that was. Obviously, Scott was an amazing player. Joseph is still an excellent player, getting fifth place at this GP, and uh, he's being epic. So here we have Captain Bad Rug. Oh, actually, you read it. Why am I jumping? Yeah, you got Captain Bad Rug, Maz Rug, Beast Boss on Squigasaur with Head Wampus Kill Chopper. Head Wampus Kill Chopper. Hold on, before you continue. Uh, comments, comments in the video later. If you're watching this. Tell me, Beast Boss on Squigasaur with Ed Wapa's Kill Chopper, or is your Nava on Smash a Squig getting Ed Wapa's Kill Chopper? I understand the arguments for both. You're not going to convince me one or the other. I just want to hear your opinion because both are applicable, both are applicable, both are good. I just want to hear a consensus. Maybe we'll put out a community vote for it as well, just to make it fun. But when I say this in Discord, everybody starts just going at it. So I just want to do another one right now. <laughs> Shout out. All right, David, continue, sir. You got three units of Beast Snagger Boys. Ten-man Flash nice Kids. Clean. Three, three Gretchens. Yep. Okay, so some people have been going, pulling back. Some people have been pulling back on the Gretchen. So, like, single units of Gretchen. I can say I'm a little guilty of that. I don't know what you stick three on. I'm just sticking single ones on. Um, but looking at the games these last weekends, I've noticed people are still bringing three. Just covering up the board. Ten-man units. Good OC. Um, can't resist that. And the CP, of course. And he brought two... Five man All twin right. kill saw mega I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's my boy. Joseph coming out here with a thickness, man. Um, and if you keep that in mind, he doesn't have any character support, guys. He just yeah, he just brought him like that. He just was like, Hey, they're gonna come at you uh, on the wall. I'm trying to deliver devastating wounds. Don't need a character for them. Don't care, not playing the premium. Here we go. Because the board boss and mega armor um type characters are at a bit of a premium, guys, right? You're paying hundred points or 115 points, then an enhancement if you choose to. Compared to something like a war boss, that's 70 points, right? A beast boss, that's 80 points, right? So the difference, if you decide to just cut one, can push you into a different whole unit type category, which he chose to. And I can see why, since he got more expensive with these squid hog boys. Yeah, two six-man units. Two six-man units, right? Mind you, he does not have the knob on Smash or Squig, right? He doesn't have the sergeant. So this is the complete opposite. That's why I like to show these lists, guys, so you can just kind of get your own flavor. We're never going to tell you exactly who's wrong and who's right. We're showing you how they did, showing they perform. We'll show you their matchups, and you decide how you want to imitate that as well based off your local matchups, right? As for me, I'm going to crump everything and everybody the way I want. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Uh, let's look at his. Uh, rounds out with two trucks. Oh, yeah, rounds out with two trucks. So, not, guys, not that many trucks these last day, these last two performing yeah. GT lists. Um, they went for more units, not as many trucks spammy. Of course, we've seen a battle wagon, but we're not seeing a bunch. We're not seeing six trucks finally, right? First time we've been showing off these lists, and they're not spamming at least four. Three trucks. I mean, even my last game last week was three trucks. So, um, I mean, four trucks, excuse me. So, yeah, nice to see a few less trucks on the list. Now, let's look at his matchups. All right, round one gets Dark one. Angels. Well, I got to say, I like more comment. Round one. <laughs> All, right. All right, this list brought Ezreal, Librarian, and Phobos armor. Okay, let's go. A lieutenant, a Primaris Apothecary. I love beating up Space Marines. I love beating up Space Marines. Uh -huh. uh, attack bike squad, uh, desolation squad. Still okay. see people taking. No, them. they just they don't know how to not play take those. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Eliminator squad, three okay. men. Lancer gladiator making its comeback like always. Yeah. A hell blaster. Ooh, a big hell blaster. Ten. Dude, man. Goodness. Ooh. Okay, I can appreciate that. Shout out to you when you're blowing yourself up. <laughs> uh, one unit inceptors. Oh, those with inceptors, the plasma, guys. Plasma. Inceptors, guys. You guys shout out in your comments how you're dealing with inceptors and such, right? Inceptors can be an issue when you uh, want to run forward with your army and beat everybody up and these guys can come in within three inches of you with great firepower so shout out to how you do it but i can see these guys have their plasmas on and he's got one incursor squad one infiltrator squad okay another one invader atv invader atv okay a uh, raven wing dark shroud okay uh, and a redemptor dreadnought the redemptor dreadnought all right that's what's up so that's how he did and how did his score into this guy he got a 92 going into Derek Mass, right? So a lot of you guys, we're just going to show you the list. That's what the point of this is, guys, right? We're not trying to hold you here and talk it out with our primitive ideas. We don't know how the game was played exactly, but we like to show matchups so we know context matters on how people perform. You can get a general idea once you go over an enemy's list. Okay. All right, round two versus Necron. Okay, let's go. Two, three Hex Max Destroyers. I love Hex Max Destroyers. I love, I love Hex Max Destroyers. Sorry, I don't know. A Lord, Overlord, 
three, uh, two technomancers. All just, he's just bringing all characters, I guess. Transcending this, this, this Katana. Is, uh, Kano, Kano, Tech Reanimator. Two units of Crypto Thralls. Death Marks. Three units of three Heavy Destroyers. Mm -hmm. Two units of ten Lynch Guard. And a three man Tomb Blade. Unit. He's going to have like eight characters on his list, just saying. <laughs> How many normal units do you have? Do you even have enough units for all these characters? I'm, I'm joking, guys. I understand what's happening. Um, I can just see this not having a lot of just not enough board presence to really threaten the orcs to stop them from scoring. Uh, but it was enough of a threat with the Lich Guard being able to stand an objective and such and not be able to just get the place that Joseph still only scored 80 points against his Necron list. Right? Uh, you can assume why based off the, the weird kind of thick units of uh, Lich Guard and the Crypto Thralls. Right. This guy's preparing more for a gun line army with these hex marks. Mm -hmm. They can shoot you anytime you shoot a unit by them. Yeah, but Joseph still pulled it out. Great, great job, Joseph. Um, going into his third matchup. In round three, we got Necron. Again. Okay. So, this time. Oh, and as, we, as we pointed out, we got, sorry to interrupt you. As we pointed out in the stats earlier, the 40K stats, the most popular army we played up against is Necrons. Last week, very similar. Necrons. The week before that, Necrons. If we pull up like the last three or four weeks, Necrons are going to be at least one of the top three most uh, played factions against us and most played factions in 40k as a whole. So pay attention to what Necron players are doing as you're most likely going to have to crump one on your way up through an RTT or local game sometimes. All right, and this list is spamming some Katans. Let's go. That's always a, that's always a strategy. <laughs> we got the Deceiver, the Nightbringer, the Void Dragon, a Hexmark Destroyer, mm -hmm. a Lord. Let's go. Orc and the Diviner. Orc and the Diviner. Oh, Overlord. I didn't say that right. See, I'm illiterate. All right. Oh, a fourth Catan with the Transcendent. Okay, guy, calm down, man. No, I was kidding. I like heard the first time we see the, this. The fact, I know we had, they really haven't. But the fact that they get enhancements just annoys me, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's like, what? What do you mean an enhancement on an immortal being thing? All right, and what else was on their list? Uh, You're about to just get up on their list. They had other stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, underground warrior, a blob of warriors. Okay. Two units of crypto thralls and. Uh, oh, they barely had player. other stuff. Yeah, barely. they barely had other stuff, guys. I didn't even mean to say that. That was funny. Wait, um, yeah. Not making fun of necron players, but I'm uh, making fun of them. All right, so yeah, that uh, so how do you do against this? Was it this is fourth matchup? This is round four. Yeah, it's... and this is one of his lower scoring games with 76 oh. points. Oh, no, it's the third or fourth? Like, oh, it's third. Okay. Three. okay, third. So, actually, I lied. 92. 92, 92 <laughs> points. Because I was like, dang, how did he score him? Nothing. No, he got he got crumped down. He got 92 points against that Necron player. That's what we um, like to see. With his 21 characters and his three actual battle line units. So, yes, uh, another one. So, let's move on to number four with Joshua Solo. Solo. Guys, you always know that orcs, even though we're falling somewhere between C tier and B tier, and we kind of fluctuate based off who's doing the stats and who they're including and who they're not. Um, just playing the mission overall well, optimizing your movement phase, um, and just not getting horribly bad matchups, you can do very well. RCTs and even GTs do relatively well. Don't be scared to play orcs just because people talk down about them or the units that you want to play because you see units creeping in all the time into the meta that other people are like, that's a C tier unit. So let's continue. All right, round four, Aldari. Mm hmm. Not surprised once you get to the higher tables, you're going to face an army oh, like yeah. this. Especially because they're being spammed at, at tournaments right now. They really want to win. They've been getting beat up for two editions straight, and uh, nobody felt bad for them, so they <laughs> don't feel bad doing it to us now. Yeah, this list got the Wayleaper, the Avatar King, Farseer. I like the Avatar King, guys, as a model. I mean, even yeah, though scrawny, cool. even though scrawny beakies are annoying, um, scrawny gets over here. Scrawnies uh, have a cool little god like that sometimes, all right? Uh, Farseer, Farseer Skyrunner, Spirit Seer, some Storm Guardians. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, three Those Fire guys. Prisms. Of course. Shroud Runners. Yep. Three, uh, three, one, two one, support one. weapons. Warp Spider. Two Warp Spider units. The Wraith God. Okay. Very uh, very typical. Only one year Wraith God unit. So you can see that's uh, how he did. But this was his fourth matchup. This is his fourth game. And Josh. Uh, sorry, Josh. Sorry, sorry it's his name. Joseph, Joseph pulled, pulled it, it out, out actually, yeah. and actually ended up winning with a 76 score, guys, into Eldar with fire prisms, with the race, uh, with race guard, with everything that you would be worried about overall, right? The difference with the Avatar of Kane, I don't really see him all the time. Um, but, you know, whatever. So, really good list. Great job by uh, Joseph. Now we go on to his final matchup. And this is where he finally dropped the game. 
It was a good game, but he did Ooh. drop it to Tyranids. Um, I think Tyranids are a pretty good army. It just comes down to the, I think the, the mission, they end up rolling, and they really do care about, um, like how the missions deployed as well as the secondaries. If they're not spamming the little mines, let's see what he had here. Yeah, he brought a Neuro Tyrant. Mm -hmm. Only one character. Gargoyles. Okay, I like gargoyles. Two on. units of Bargoths. Yep, no brainer. So cheap, effective against infantry. Two oh, units of for the secondary scoring. Okay. I see double extra greens all over the place. Is this double mouse scepter? Yep, double, double mouse, mouse scepter all over the place. These guys have minus one to hit guys if you haven't played against mouse scepters. So they have great shooting as three damage, and they actually fight as three damage. They have a four up in bone. They can, Tyranids can always pop two uh, field no pain of a five up field no pain two times in a row. And then the mouse scepter has an innate minus one to hit aura and melee, and you're trying to target units within six inches of them. So this is actually a hard matchup for orcs um, in general, it can be, because when you want to go and deliver your matchup, your meta, like we've seen he brought um, on this met in this list on Joseph Bliss, he has two units of Meganons that have no character support. So they're not getting minus one to hit. That means when they run into the Mouse Scepter or anything near the Mouse Scepter, they're going to be hitting on fives. Right? So imagine yes. the Meganons hitting on fives. Oof, something you really, deliver, you really want to deliver. On top of the fact that the Mouse Scepter has a four bin bolt. So most Tyranid monsters don't have an invul, so you're actually going to appreciate the kill songs. Now set there's a four up invul, so you're going into a minus one to hit, four up invul, four up field no pain. Um, so if I can guess, what was kind of a factor here was the fact that he could take over two sides of the table with these big malice scepter bricks and uh, really bother people. So he it was a good game, but he ended up losing out to that. Three Molochs. And three Molochs. Uh, Molochs, I like them, guys. So we're all against it's like a Zirna player for the most part because you can get them where you want them and you can decide I'm going to run up the table or try to like deep strike with them. And we know deep strike is everywhere in the game now, guys. We as our players don't consider it as much because we have so much stuff that can go everywhere and we have great chance for it. But for everybody else, they're constantly just thinking about what can I have for rapid ingress? What can I have for rapid ingress? What can I wrap? Like everybody else in the, in the game is thinking about rapid ingressing. Or um, you know, just straight up company shake in general. So yeah, and that's another thing. Right. And uh, we got the Psycho Sage, Sage, Venomthropes. I don't love it, but I mean, it, it did its thing, I guess. And then two big zone throws. Yeah. Um, this is another. This is one of the units that I think having flash gets helps into going into the town merchant as you can, right? Um, didn't help Joseph in this matchup, but I think it was more because of the malice after this Right. Because if you're gonna bring two units of Squid Hog Boys. Two units of Mega Noms, as Joseph did, and then two Malice Scepters are on the battlefield. They're making all those things minus one to hit. That means your Squig Hog right, mounts are hitting on fives, Mega Noms hitting on fives, and you lack all the characters to give you plus one. Is that an aura? Or yeah, that it's aura? an aura. With okay, so it affects the uh, yep. Flash gets too? Yep. Oh, no, it's for melee only. Oh, for melee only. Yeah. So it just, but that's his big hitting units. Right. And uh, the fact that they get a field no pain. So you just bounce off those. Mm -hmm. It happened to me before, guys. I, I underestimated how, how great that was, and it actually. Happened to me. So yeah, that's how Joseph did. Great job by Joseph. Still got fifth place. Still show repping for orcs as a whole, keeping us relative, keeping us relevant, bringing a nice fun list that was still killy and punchy. He brought a lot of mega knobs to the to the game, but he didn't bring a bunch of characters to overcommit on them. Then he brought a bunch of squid hog boys, but he didn't bring much characters to over submit on them. And the points that he did put for characters were only to benefit the flash kids, and then the other guys were playing off by themselves, just being durable, punchy units. So I like that, right? Um so, we'll move, let's look at the chats, maybe. I feel, yeah, like, yeah, I feel yeah. like people have been blowing us up, possibly, and I've just been ranting. So, shout out to everybody that's possibly here. Hello. We got some responses to your question. Oh, earlier. okay, okay. Let's see. Let's, let's see what you got to say, kids. Let's okay. argue. No, let's get in. No. Rob Broom, okay. smash a squig with head whoppers. Okay, that's one. Let's smash a squig with head whoppers. Joel says, knob on smasher going into the squig squad. Rob says, oh, this, I'm talking. Joel says, can't ruin orcs as long as they're green. That's true. Because green is the best. I think uh, Rob is letting us know that he got his tanks from Timu. Okay. Everybody, a lot of people have been asking about crop tanks. Timu, guys. Timu. Um, that's where a lot of people are getting their little toy tanks and they're turning them into crop tanks. Do it. You won't be mad about it. They're fun having your collection. Um, and if you do it that way, if GW does end up killing your Forge World models, as they've been doing to other factions, you won't feel bad. All right, Rob Broom thinks, still think Rotting should have been mentioned in the DACA stream the other day. 
five D3 blast rockets hitting on fours with 20 T5 rules. Yeah, I think I think that's a good one point to bring in. We could have also brought those two. Um, and then some people even have a, a, a say in uh, Grant Megatanks. I'm not saying that's what you're saying. Just saying another unit that people can bring out. I, I a little bit stick away from Forge World as a lot less people have access to Forge World. And I don't want to tell people like, here, start kit bashing into these models so that you can stay relative. I'm agreeing with you that they're good. But in, in my mind, I just a just little bit, I, I struggle personally to always include Forge World because I know it's harder for people to get to Forge World. And I really like for people to just play with like their plastic and not worry about something being outdated or burned. But with that being said, like you said, because your comments are relevant to the team who comment, if you are going to get ground tanks, they're excellent for shooting as a firepower for a lot of reasons stated. And if you are going to get them, I definitely say you get them kit bashed because you don't want to waste your money on resin that gets burnt out in a couple of years. Well, this says knob over boss. You know I'm biased about my knobs. Yeah, me too. Hey, and I, the next list is for one of you all day. Me and you, boy. Me and you get. All right. Any uh, more people yelling at me? I like to be yelling at me. Uh, Rob says, what do you reckon is Orc's hardest matchup? So a consistently hard matchup for Orcs as a whole, shout out to Brandon, uh, Big Mac Brandon, too, we talked about this, is Knights just hit or miss, right? If you don't bring the tools, they tear you apart, also depending on matchup, this and meta. Um, I know they took away the towering keyword, which helped us as a whole. But when they did have cowering towering keyword, they were annihilating us, right? Um, so there's something that just off the rip is a hard matchup. Custodes constantly are a hard matchup currently. This index, they're a very hard matchup, but they're hard matchup for everybody. But for us in particular, as they get to fight first, and they're just so reliable, and then we have only minus one AP a lot of the time, or minus two. Um, but yeah, we're trying to find ways to, to kind of deal with them. So I would say. Custodes based off them being kind of broken. Uh, an army that's kind of C tier but still does good into us can be nice. But for the most part, a lot of orc players are teching into the squid hog meta or the beast snagger kind of list. And then those lists do well into nice. But if you're not going there, you can kind of run into trouble because uh, they do tend to have the firepower and their ability to beat up the MSU list, which is the other archetype of orc list that people are running. All right. Uh, sh shrimps less. Yes, Timu is legit. Just asking, yeah, Timu. So, Timu legit, yes. A lot yes. of people in our Discord have been using Timu, um, and getting great results and showing pictures and everything. Like, I'm getting motivated to do it too if I wasn't such a near to talk at Javier. All right, James, you, you guys think GW will bump up the price of trucks when the codex comes out? Oh, um, mm -hmm. trucks are kind of cheap. I See, if you're just going to ask about GW increasing points, I mean, cost of something, I'm going to say yes, because they've been doing it constantly. Um, I just hope they don't, because right now, Orcs trucks are such cheap when it comes to points. So as the money, monetary costs increase, the less return you're getting for your actual points in-game. That's why we put our list together, when it's like beginner-friendly list as to how to collect Orcs. We try to include bigger point value models, because we want you to get your, your money return as well. Um, so in a round of my answer, I'm saying, yeah, most likely. Dogdacious says, just bought 30 flash kids. I'll post it next year when I'm finished. With them. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh, that's a dogdacious answer. Um, I thought I was, you know, feeling myself for having 15 because I have 15 ready to go. They're getting painted up right now. Uh, so, yeah, the 30 is awesome. Too bad there's only one Captain Bad Road. Yeah, Joel saying, they make Forge World models that they didn't legend. Was POE stands for something? Is that no, I'm not sure what that means because I'm not deep. Um, oh, but sorry. Austin Hatfield, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Like, I don't know. I started going, guys. Yeah, there you guys. Here we go. Here we go. It's like a pump up thing, you know? Sorry, I, was, I had a Bruce Buffer in my head when oh. I said that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Buffer is an orc. That's why. Your boy, big homie Bon, doesn't think he can beat his the knights in his meta. It is a hard matchup. Yeah, it is. It is a hard match. Yeah, it is a hard matchup. Me and Brandon were talking about it. Like, ooh, that's a hole. It can go. Either. It can go. You know, the stats say that we beat him and such. But if you're if you're pegging directly at the beast knights, you have a better chance. But that being said, people are going into MSU. People are bringing flash hits now, and that doesn't necessarily help you against knights all the time. Uh, Joel, hope they make 
the legal Forge World models into plastic, be nice to have plastic bike balls. Right? I, and that's another thing. I, I love my Forge World War Boss on bike, but uh, I would like if they came up with them. Do you think they will? I hope so. He's been around. around. They keep updating his points. He's consistent in the meta. He's a cool model. I would really like if they did. Right? They did it for Snickrot. I hope they do it for Captain Badruck. I hope they use it um, for a lot of the more characters because I really do like a lot of them. Uh, Mad Dog Grosnick is hideous. Okay? If you've been around for a long time, you know that Mad Dog Grosnick is hideous. I still like him. Like his data sheet. But he's repulsive, so go look at him and point at him. He looks repulsive. Okay. All right, uh, Rob's suggesting make your own bike boss, mate. Like, Marine Primaire's bike is the same size for your information. Yeah, I have a, I have a war boss idea. on bike, and yeah, he, I I love him. He's a good model and everything. Um, a good size, good size too. He stands out. And, uh, Jody's asking if we just got done working out. It looks like you got a crazy pump right now. No, Jody, it's just this wah energy we're feeling from everyone in the That's chat. That's true. The wah energy gets me pumped because I did not work out today. Makes y'all beat up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah. All right. As that being said, guys, before we conclude and start getting all serious, I want to show a fun list. A fun, well-performing RTP list. And that is... This was uh, David Campagna from Vanguard Tactics. Shout out to Vanguard Tactics. If you guys know who they are, they have a YouTube channel. They're, they're good. They're bad. They're awesome. Um, and they've been showing orcs some love. So, uh, Vanguard Tactics, um, we appreciate you, even though you have no idea who you are and won't care. But let's take a look at his list. This is, yeah. He brought the mech. Yeah, he's got the mech. Yeah, dude, let's go. You know I'm a fan of the mech with the wrench. All right. Uh, one war boss with follow me, lads. Follow me. The other war boss with... Robo Cunning. Cunning but brutal. Cunning but brutal. Sorry, I can't Wait, no, that's kind of a rule. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> two right. units of boys. 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 Gretchen. Gotta Gretchen. bring the two units of Gretchen. Gretchen. He's bringing a unit of commandos. Command, let's go. Okay. He brought the burner too. Nice, nice. Oh, we gotta bring the breacher ram. Ooh, I like that. And Wade, here we go. Double no. Uh, yeah, Wade, I know you out there punching the air right now. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. And he got first place, mind you guys, with the double yes. knob. All right. Yeah. Nobody wanted to bring knobs to the GT list, so I don't get to shout this guy. And the double Storm Boys, right? You got to have your Storm um, Boys. We go back and forth sometimes, talk on Discord. How many Storm Boy units do you want? Some people say three. Some people say more than one. I'm firmly in the belief two is the perfect number. You can disagree based off your method. That's cool. But if I'm going to advise people, I'm going to say try to get two in your list. And for his vehicle. What did he bring? Oh, double the battle, battle wagon. wagon. Whoa, let's go. I didn't know you out there. <laughs> All right. And then. He's rolling deep. Yep. And then Def Cop. I don't know if this is got me to that. No, I'm just kidding. Def Cop, this guys. Um, shout out to Discord. I'm having a brain fart on exactly who was talking about Def Cop in the map. Um, we've been always joking and like dunking on Def Cop this, but we've seen some people try to bring them and such. I will say. They do have rockets, guys, and they do deep strike. They are a better target for rapid ingress. But like I say personally, if I'm going to bring stuff that's in a deep strike, I'm going to bring more units because that's what works are better at. But people are trying to find ways to play death compasses because it's just another unit that can possibly come in and start maneuvering with Adam to them. So give them a little love, not always going to laugh with them. Some people really try to use them and want to use them, and they come in those new Battle Force boxes. So I want people to just immediately be like, oh, no, guys, they can still be played. Don't, don't hate them. And then um, last one is the Kill Tank. Yeah, where you yeah. at, Brandon? Where you at, Big Mac Brandon? Whoa. I'm a fan of the Kill Tanks, guys. Uh, I don't own one. I'm ashamed. I'm going to get one soon. Um, but, yeah, so let's look at his matchup. So he got the bat Keep in mind, battle wagons, two battle wagons. That's thick. Um, and then the Kill Tank. So you can see he's already coming in here with what I would start calling a mech or what a stat check kind of um, – List one on it with double knobs. I love the double knobs. Just put them in the battle wagon so you can't stop them. Right. Okay. Or, or put them in the kit tank. All right. Round one. Stop. Stomping on some blood angels. Stomping on the peakies. Them thirsty boys. That's what I'm going to call them. Right. Them thirsty pieces. Right. He's got Commander Dante, Chief Librarian with Fiston, uh, Captain Terminator Armor, Chaplain with Jump Pack. Unit of uh, intercessors, unit of assault intercessors, five man assault terminators, five man regular terminator squad, uh, three man aggressors. Interesting, interesting. 
with the auto ball storm. Sanguinary Guard, uh, five man unit death company with jump packs. Okay, I'll take one. Ballistus Dreadnought, the Redemptor Dreadnought, and Impulsor. Okay, let's scroll up. I'm a fan of the Impulsor on the list. Um, Sanguinary Guard are a bit expensive nowadays, but they at least they got their banner. Um, he did bring some Terminator bricks, but um, these bricks, like let's say he tar- let's say he charges into multiple of these Terminator br- or these uh, oh, Space Marine lists with his knobs, he's smashing these units out, right? Or if they're counter charging him because they're Blood Angels, he's directly giving the Orc player great trades. Because Terminators get charged, or one of these units gets charged out of the battle wagon, I mean, the battle wagon gets out, not charged something, then they get fought in death because they don't have a ton of reliable firepower. I'm sure they kill some of them shooting, right? Small arms fire, a couple shots here and there. But still, the knob fighting in death with the war boss will still annihilate a space war unit, especially if you're blowing up on fives and everything, right? Yeah. So I can see why this ended up being a harder game for the 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 Blood Angel player, as they want to kind of go down there and beat you up to get you out of there. But um, David said, nope, and put a 100 points against this list. Right. So let's go. Um, let's move to his second matchup. Round two, we got the World Eaters. Ooh, and I know for a fact, um, World Eaters can give orcs some issues when uh, um, in the right condition and circumstances. So let's see what happened here with this list. Are Pretty typical, I'm sure. Angron. Okay. World Leaders Master Possessions, two of them. Then you got your unit of 10 jack, two units of 10 jackals. Okay. Those guys having sticky objectives is so useful for World Leaders, something mm-hmm. that orcs don't have sticky objectives. Um, I'm sure they really appreciate having that. Uh, two units of five okay. berserkers. Okay. A Ford, two Forge Fiend. Okay. People bring them, they kind of, um, they, this is a unit they'll kind of add rapid ingress on you. So you guys know. Right. Yeah, it's a very good uh, good shooting profile. 36 inches, strength 10, minus 3, 3 damage. Yeah, they tend to just D3 try to shots. rapid ingress that if they can on the battlefield. Keep one there and then the other one coming. Uh, one big unit of Terminators. Yikes. Here we go. And some brigands. There we go. See how I, I said that Two earlier, brigands. guys, and I didn't even notice this matchup. Not even a lie. This is actually an efficient way to play World Eaters. If you're going to play against a World Eaters player and they're bringing brigands, bring your A game because that solves a lot of their weaknesses and holes. That the rest of their army and benefit benefit from, right? If you can bring reliable gun platforms, and he only has two, two. Shoot, if he had three, it'd be even rougher. Um, and the points that he ended up scoring in this game and proving it, because David did win, but he only scored forty-one points. So these guys were playing some pretty cheeky forty k back and forth, barely maneuvering. The orc player didn't have a ton of units. Um, world eaters being able to fight first and and kill you, and Angron being so really annoying and being able to possibly come back. Um, I'm sure the battle wagons being nice kind of safe chassis so that they can just immediately punch and because you you know if you roll bad with those two arbingers because you would need multiple barely three you're not going to reliably pop that battle wagon if they roll hot enough so um and the four four teams could but yeah i'm sure the battle wagons being thick i'm sure the kill can have you actually having them shooting might have played played into the Play there that way because this guy actually has guns and fighting potential. Yes. Um, but they were going on elite on elite matchups, so that ended up hurting both their scores. But they didn't end up winning with the forty-one point list. Um, but shout out that if you ever hear world leaders start making come ups, guys, just know the brigands are what you're going to start seeing on these lists. Don't be surprised if they drop and ground spam masters executions, throw in triple brigands, um. Get more and, and then then just get more units and then just say demon prince with the four up invul and then a bunch of jackals for the sticky objectives. That's more or less what's going to be the, the better performing world leaders list in my opinion. Yeah. But let's go on. I could be wrong, but so far, not that I'm uh, the smartest odd boy, but I've been right about a couple things here and there, which is good because that means we're all learning together because I'm just learning information along with you guys. And then round three. Round three. The Ultramarines, the Blue Beakies, the Lucky Kids. By this list, you brought a Primaris Librarian, Primaris Tech Marine, Gilliman, two units of the Intercessor G-Man. Squad, a three man Blade Guard Veteran Squad, three man Eliminator Squad, two units of Infiltrators. The Redemptor 2 Ooh, units. They're Redemptor coming back. Three. Oh, three. Redemptor People are wondering if they're going to oh. bring those back at all anymore, but they're out here. Let's go. And then some uh, two units of Scout Snipers. Okay. They'll bring the snipers into play. Obvious reasons. Try to stand by some characters. Very cool. Very cool. 
Um, I appreciate the dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts are still durable as they have the minus one to hit. They're kind of slow. I mean, sorry, sorry, minus, minus one, one damage. damage, excuse me. Um, but they're still kind of slow. They're expensive. Too. Um, and they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, but I, I appreciate their new kind of toughness overall. So shout out to him for attempting. But David did pull this one out as well with a 65 point win. Not super high scoring, um, but still. And I will just say in the background that the second place player was a world leader's list in this event. Yes. Yep. So here was his list. He just went out for some shooting. Typical space my ultra list. I got Jill Gilman, blah blah blah. Cute, but got crooked. But yeah, shout out, pull his list up real quick one more time just so we can have it up. And then we can read some comments and chats again, possibly, before we button this up and talk about some things we learned and observed on this stream again today in the meta. Ooh, I like this one, guys. Today was pretty fun. That was a pretty interesting uh, different stuff. We've been seeing some Death Killer War tracks, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, Jody thinks we got to show more love to the Grot Tanks. Yeah, Grot Tanks. Um, I, I, I'm here. You guys are right. I, it's my fault. I personally can give Ford Girl a bit more love. Thank you, Jody. Grot Tanks, I'll be giving more love and keeping it out. Shout out for you guys. Tell me, I will be more observant. Joel, oh, I built my own bike boss years ago out of an old assault on Black Reach Copter. Yeah, that's oh. that's the copters I own too. I the assault on Black Reach Copters. Um, I don't own any of the newest ones, but they're they're close enough, right? Right? They look close enough. So uh, good job for kit bashing. Anybody that kit bashes, that's the best part of being an orc player sometimes. Big Mac Brandon. I have an RTT this weekend. Gonna bust out the squig list and I'll take more pictures and yeah, stuff. Yeah, take more pictures. Um and share with us, right guys? Like I said, you can put the tournament review and if you wanna directly let me know how you're doing, especially if you get like first, second place. Send it directly on Discord to me and talk to me. And then there's a chance that maybe on a Friday or something when we're doing our hobby stream, we could show it up and give it a nice little chat so everybody can feel involved. I want to promote the org community as a whole, you guys, to go out, play at least RTTs more often because we do very well at RTTs. GTs maybe not, but RTTs we do very well because we get to sometimes miss those S tier kind of bullies and get really high scoring games as a whole um, because we do so well at the, at the main objective of the game, which is scoring. So I like to encourage you guys, and one way I want to encourage that is um, give you guys shout-outs when you guys perform well, especially if you're a part of our community. And Brand has done that. Um, Kels did that. He's a part of shout-out to Kelvin. Kels, I'm saying your name horribly. I'm sorry, but, but yeah, excellent. And then right, Mark Bruce says, Bruce. you need two Storm Boys. Their utility is too valuable for their points. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. Minimum two. Minimum two. Can't just do one. Joel says, Deep Strike for Coptas is big, but they are a one-shot pony. Yeah. Yep. No, I get it. I'm just still letting people know. And especially if they're new, you know, you don't want them to feel like they have an um, unusable mop unit, right? Still get the use out of your model. If you got Death Coptas, you're in for 40k, whatever, or you don't own Storm Boys yet, understand how they could be useful and what their purpose and intent is. Even if it's not the optimal choice, it's still a choice. It can still be used. Um but yeah, in my opinion, it's still not great. But still try to use it if you're owning it, right? Don't, don't hate the hobby because you don't have certain models. Brandon's loving the kill tank on this list. Brandon loves anything mechanical and anything thick. Thick. Big Mac. Mm -hmm. Bill Jacobs, I'm about to kit bash an impulsor to a truck for my boy. Damn, that's going to be a fancy truck. We've seen that from, uh, shout out to Daggers. I haven't seen you in a second, but Daggers did that too. Uh, Bill Jacobs, if you want to show it in our Discord, I'd like to see everybody's stuff. The Pale Orcs and flexing his knights and everything. So, yeah, shout out to all you guys who've been showing Discord and um, outperforming me on Hobby Task constantly. Dogdacious is asking, what's your guys' opinion on bringing the Mech Boy Workshop and hiding it to screen half of the board? <laughs> yeah, I, I see that being talked about as a whole. GW hasn't addressed it. If you own one, do it. I own the Mech Shop. I'm considering doing it for that same reason. If you're really trying to be out of the box too, maybe you're like, I'm going to bring uh, buggies too. Like, do it. Start bringing it. You know, bring killer cans, whatever, man. Yeah, attempt it. Um, uh, if you own the model, which only about 5% of people do, and I'm just throwing that number off the top of my head, it's totally a lie, then try it. Why not? Because you're never going to be able to use it again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, give it a shot, dude. It's it's rules are totally applicable right now. Applicable right now. And that's how people are interpreting their rules. And GW doesn't address it, go ahead and do it. There's a lot right now. Um, 
40 k is all over the place as long as you're not abusing your friends and you can maintain a nice healthy great games and friend group make use of your favorite models and how you want to play man i'm always going to say that as long as you're not ruining people's games all right mark bruce is letting us know in an rtt against custards i shot a three-man unit chermies hiding on an objective had dropped them down with one to two wounds then dropped in two units in his deployment zone charged one unit I held them up for not scoring primary for two turns. Yeah, Bruce was uh, one of the people that I was talking about how he was engaging Custodes units before they got to objectives, and I was helping him in his game to sway against them and beat them. Shout out to Bruce. I said that earlier, but this is the context of what I meant when I said it, guys. Bruce specifically, one of the people talking about that. Also follows up with, I've been using Gaz to get the effect with two mega knobs using terrain to move up and wait to hit with the wall. With the wall. Rob, kind of said the big boss, Gazgul, doesn't get much play. He actually does get a lot of um, appearances. I would say he doesn't end up being in, like, the top, top performing list all the time since they've removed him from being able to move and transport. But he does give rock to events, guys. He really does. Um, because he gets dev wounds as long as his Mega Nodge is still alive during the walk. And his Makari Lethal Aura is very useful if you're bringing a lot of boys and such. So, no, actually, he does get a play. Um, you've seen people bring big bricks of 20-man units of boys and a gas, and then the weird boy tell them around the field, teleporting those 20-man units around the field, and then gas tell them to wah near them and giving them. So it is less top, top, top tier competitive, but by no means is it just not existing. Gaz actually is totally playable. He just has a hard time against armies that love that wounds. Rob, last question for me. What's your personal favorite orc models, either for aesthetic or ability in the game? Oh. I'll yeah, answer that one later. I want to rush him. I will answer that question. I'll continue first. Yeah, two more chests to think about. Okay, I can think. Where's my thinking? Where's my thinking? Cut rock. Got to put it on my head. <laughs> All right. Wappa right. wap. Wah. <laughs> Been loving the Discord chat and seeing everyone's hobby product progress keep it up legends yeah i appreciate how our discord has seems like a good back and forth between people with this uh argue with each other about certain topics in a nice healthy way and then they'll talk about like what's fun not necessarily the most competitive yet people are having great performances whether it's casual play or rtt play and then they bring it back and they show us so we're constantly bouncing ideas off each other we don't believe in like one directly set meta right now in our desk in our discord we believe in like the archetypes that maybe people are running and what strength we can pull from each of them, right? At first, people were like, I just want to shoot. And then we realized flash gets can be incorporated with Squid Dog Boys, flash gets can be incorporated with Max, stuff like that. So that's a good way to learn. Um, I appreciate you guys too. Mark Bruce, Dev Wounds and Gaz with hitting with two Mega Knobs. I was putting through a minimum of eight mortals yeah, exactly. at a time. Yep, that's exactly what I was saying. So Gaz does get play, guys. Even if you just bring like a two man unit, just so you can get that. Dev ability once it's out, so you can try to throttle it. Like I said, I'm not saying he's gonna win you a GT, but don't be scared to bring him on an RTT, man. I love my guy, he's a beautiful model. We're caught up, it's time to answer the question. All right, well, I'll go first while you're thinking. Uh, as a non orc player, I'm a big fan of the shock jump drag stuff, and his ability in the game is cool too. I love me some teleporting. <laughs> it's so hard for Eddie to decide. He loves all his orc I'm models. Like, I don't know. I've never even thought of like what's a favorite. Um, let's see if I try to name, I start just saying stuff. Just start saying stuff. All right, so I have to say a model that I really like. Um, I'm gonna stay away from the B Snagger line guys because they're kind of like so new. It's easy to just kind of favor them. So let's move away from the new, most recent B Snagger line. My favorite is, gosh, it sounds really corny, um, but I really like the Battle Wagon. Like, <laughs> okay, I know it sounds dumb, but I'm not even kidding. I really like the Battle Wagon because it's obnoxious. And then when you think about it and more, the fact that orcs bring like a ton of them, and that's our version of a tank as an orc guys. When like the Imperium sees us, they're like, that's one of our tanks. They say that. And how orcs just bring a ton of them and they're just compiled of everybody's trash. But yet in the game, you can like throw 22 models in there other factions can't do that. When you bring a battle wagon, and it's absurdly big. Like, my battle wagon, I have my roller on it. I have my guns on it. I have, like, a lot of stuff. I actually broke uh, 
my crane or whatever, because I used to transport it everywhere. But my point is, it's an absurdly big model, which is hilarious. And then the fact that you tell people, like, yeah, I got 22 guys in there. And, that, and since 8th edition, you're able to put 20 people in there. So it's just, that's why it's always been, since I started, I started with mobs of boys, and then I got given a battle wagon. So it was literally like I brought mobs, and then I had one new battle wagon. I was just like, everywhere, almost dead in there. So that I, I favor that. And then you have just silly guns coming out of them and everything. So yeah, battle wagons are probably something that I've just, a lot of games I've played with them, I've had fun with them. I bought the upgraded kit from them during ninth edition. I always gave it the roller. I didn't care what was meta or not. I paid for the points. Um, it was just, so yeah, I think battle wagon might be my favorite. There's a meme in the Discord about battle wagons, or it shows in one picture battle wagons in ninth edition. It's just your stripped down basic battle wagon. And then battle wagons in tenth edition with every single thing you can put on it. Yeah. <laughs> Even like the turret double glued on top yeah. of them, the other one. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So long answer, uh, force me to say, yeah, I think battle wagon might be my favorite because if you mix like it gives me hilarious games a lot of the time. And uh, all the stuff hanging out there. I got to upgrade kit, so I actually do have like the lava and the little brown on the side that's like repairing it and all that stuff. So I love it. Mine's painted really nicely. We got another chat from Skeletor, and he's just saying he appreciates God's creatures. I'll just leave it at that. Amen. <laughs> oh, <Gawky> Mark. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And what are you in? What hour in? Okay. So, guys, I think we're going to call it there. We're trying to keep these to a concise hour. That way, more people can see them because, uh, not to call anybody out, but we've been having a full bunch of cop topics that we'll cover in these Wednesday meta talks. And then Discord people will pull them up again. And I'm like, we talked about that. Hopefully I was relative enough and that makes sense. So we want to keep this more concise. That way people can kind of actually ingest them, especially if they're newer people in the community and the, and the meta and the content. So yeah, try to keep it around an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. And we'll be cutting down a lot of these live streams too for, for you guys for so it's easier to digest. Yeah, I just want to focus on one list and just kind of listen to it in 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going to get that to you guys. We like the live streams because we like to interact with you guys and hear stuff that we might not hear. We just live stream, but you guys yell at us and such. And uh, also, we're going to be moving our Friday streams to 8.30 based off uh, your guys' feedback. Yeah, 8.30. Let's go. All right. Is that it, then? That's it. All right, everybody. We know. appreciate you guys being here. Um Keep that wall energy up. Keep your games up. I want to see more players get out to the RTTs. You do, we do excellent as a faction RTTs. Don't let the stats and the, and the meta talk fool you all the time. Because our meta is what matters. And the one thing that matters most is don't cross the wall because we've knocked your teeth out. <laughs>